What does the Lord say is responsible for Assyria's rise and why is this important? This is the question we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of 2 Kings on walking through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing 2 Kings chapter 19 verses 20 to 28. But before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, turn to 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 20. But if you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So 2 Kings chapter 19, beginning of verse 20. Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Because you have prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. This is the word which the Lord has spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, has despised you, laughed you to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem has shaken her head behind your back. Whom have you reproached and blasphemed? Against whom have you raised your voice and lifted up your eyes on high? Against the Holy One of Israel. By your messengers you have reproached the Lord and said, by the multitude of my chariots, I have come up to the height of the mountains, to the, limits, to the limits of Lebanon. I will cut down its tall cedars and its choice cypress trees. I will enter the extremity of its borders to its fruitful forest. I have dug and drunk strange water, and with the soles of my feet I have dried up all the brooks of defense. Did you not hear long ago how I made it from ancient times that I formed it? Now I have brought it to pass that you should be for crushing fortif you should be for crushing fortified cities into heaps of ruins. Therefore their inhabitants had little power. They were dismayed and confounded. They were as the grass of the field, as the green herb, as the grass on the housetops, and the grain blighted before it's grown. But I know your dwelling place, your going out and your coming in, and your rage against me. Because your rage against me and your tumult have come up to my ears, therefore I will put my hook in your nose and my bridle in your lips, and I will turn you back by the way which you came. We have been dealing with the invasion of Judah by the Assyrians. It was led under the reign of Sennacherib. Why did the Assyrians come down? Because Hezekiah had rebelled against the Assyrian tribute that had been in place since Hezekiah's father Ahaz had placed Judah under such in the days of Tiglath-Pileser. The first expedition by Assyria was in 701 BC, and it was successful in quelling the rebellion, for Hezekiah simply folded under the pressure of defeat and gave Sennacherib more tribute in order for him to leave. However, about three years later, Hezekiah again rebelled, but this time trusted in the Lord for deliverance. Assyria had mocked Hezekiah for his supposed trust in God, for the gods of the other nations that Assyria had conquered hadn't saved these nations. Why would this be any different? And of course, the difference would be that the Assyrians were defeating nations that worshipped false gods, who could do nothing. While this time, Assyria was going up against a nation that worshipped the true God of this universe. And so, if Jehovah was on Judah's side, Assyria would be defeated. Upon hearing Sennacherib's latest threat, though, Hezekiah again went to the house of the Lord and prayed that the Lord would vindicate his own name that was being blasphemed by Assyria and deliver Judah from under, the, under their hands. And so in verse 20 and downwards, we get the Lord's response to Hezekiah's prayer as given to him by Isaiah the prophet. Isaiah begins by saying that because Hezekiah had prayed to God against the king of Assyria, the Lord had heard. Now this might make it seem that God wasn't going to do anything to protect Judah unless Hezekiah prayed, but I don't believe that is what is, uh, Isaiah is saying here. Remember, three years earlier, Hezekiah trusted in his money to save him, but that, sal but that salvation was fleeting. Sennacherib returned. However, this time Hezekiah was placing his trust in the Lord and had humbly communicated that to the Lord through prayer. And so, based on that humility, the Lord would hear and answer his prayer. It's an important lesson to us. If we decide that we're going to go at things on our own, the Lord will let us do that, often to our own hurt. But if we humbly seek him and his assistance in prayer, that is Christians, the Lord will hear our prayer, and according to his own will, will answer them. 
And in this case, it was certainly the Lord's will to deliver Judah from the hands of the blasphemous Assyrians. In doing so, God would remind the Assyrians of a few things. First, he would remind the Assyrians that Jerusalem, due to her faith in God, would not stand in fear of the Assyrians' threat. Why could they, in faith, make this stand? Because it was the Lord who had raised up the Assyrians to be the conquerors that they had thus been thus far, executing the judgment of God against the nations who were against him. You see, what the Assyrians credited to their own might was actually God working. God struck fear into the nations that Assyria conquered, just as God had strengthened them. Remember, Israel and Syria deserved judgment for attacking Judah in the days of Ahaz, and Israel deserved even more judgment for her idolatry that had persisted over the previous two centuries. And so God sent teglath pileser to execute that judgment, and Shalmaneser to complete it. He allowed Judah to be placed under Assyrian control due to Judah under Ahaz, trusting in Assyria for their strength rather than God. But now that Judah was going to trust in God, God was going to rein the haughty Assyrians in and send them back to where they came. In doing this, God is not saying that he was ready to fully bring the Assyrians down, which he would later do through the use of the Babylonians. It's just here in this moment in time, he would humble them a bit, showing them who was in control. And hint, it was not them. This teaches us again an important lesson, which is that God does rule in the affairs of men, even today, and according to his will can choose to raise up and tear down nations as he sees fit. So the defeat of Assyria is what God said he would do. What sign would God give to Hezekiah that would show that what was about to happen to Assyria was by the word of his power and not just pure happenstance? We'll find that out, Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord will, and we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of 2 Kings chapter 19, verses 29 to 37, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends, so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of his cross.